So a little bit of history on our company. We were founded in 1995, so we've been at this a number of years. Uh, we actually introduced the first 3D printer to the world in 97, our very first product. And since then, have been part of work on a number of improvements. Uh, and so we're actually in our third generation of product uh, that's in the marketplace today, fully advancing from where we started in our early days. And I'll tell you a lot about a lot about those advances. So ultimately, now we have 6,000 units in the field across our entire product line. And importantly, too, we also have a full line of 3D scanners, and have also ventured into more of the art, traditional RP technologies, DLP-based uh, photoresin system. But today I'm actually going to focus on just the Z printer line since we're only given 15 minutes to, to go over things. So for Z printers, the portfolio consists now of a full line of machines from our Z printer 150, very portable, to our top of the line Z printer 650. And you may know us for our speed, cost, and ease of use of these systems. And so I'll briefly cover those topics. Uh, but I also want to talk yes. a little bit about our advances in resolution and color, and kind of what's state of the art for our process today there. And then something you may not hear a lot from us, but our accuracy and material performance in terms of functional properties as well. Let's briefly on those. So speed. Speed is important. Uh, our systems can produce up to one full inch per hour, which is pretty incredible. So it means you can get your handheld sized part in just a matter of hours, which is pretty you know, incredible in today's time. So what's more important than getting one part in just a few hours is actually getting a full build of parts overnight. And so not just one part, but you can get dozens of parts in one overnight build. The speed really equals throughput of the machine. All of our machines have a very high throughput, and that's pretty interesting. Very portable. So portability is also key, we think, for 3D printing, because it, the systems are only valuable if you use them, and you're only going to use them if they're affordable to run. So just 2 to $3 per cubic inch. And that includes the powder, the binder, the printhead, the resin. Everything that goes into our models ends up costing about $2 to $3 per cubic inch, which means many handheld sized parts can cost $20 to $30. So our goal is really to have the operating cost of the machine be almost negligible compared to the value that it brings to your organization. And the third thing here is ease of use. So again, like affordability, the machines only get used if they're very easy to turn over and actually produce a physical model. So we've been very focused on that. In fact, our third generation machines is very focused on taking the technology and making it as easy to use as possible. So we've taken out 70% of the touch time compared to the previous generation. Um, in terms of the amount of time that the user has to put in to make a physical model, starting from the file up front all the way through the finishing options on the back end. So a number of steps have been automated within the printer on the software side and on the hardware side to do things like the printhead alignment, rebuild, setup, powder recapturing and recycling. All these things are happening automatically now in the system. And so user doesn't have to spend time doing it. So what's really interesting now is if you combine those three things, you combine the speed, the cost, and the ease of use, what we're seeing today is something pretty incredible. We're seeing incredible amounts of productivity on Z printers. And so we think they're basically, from our map, the highest, you know, the most productive systems in the world. Some Z printers run over 30,000 cubic inches of material a year. This is one machine. Put that in perspective, that's six to 10,000 parts off of one machine in one year. That's 20 to 30, 40 parts a day off of the system. So you're competing an entire design team pretty effectively with just one machine. And this is incredible for us, not only for our revenue, which is great, but it's incredible because what we see happening in these organizations is that anytime somebody has an idea, they're able to now print it out because it's easy, it's fast, and it doesn't cost them a lot to do. So we actually have one customer that's just a few hours drive from here that's printing over 200,000 cubic inches per year. That's, I think, 3 million cubic centimeters uh, for metric books. That's incredible. That's hundreds of models every day inside one firm. Think about that. Anytime anybody has an idea in this firm now, they're able to realize it in their hand power of Z-Corp 3D printing. That's what we're after. That's what we're trying to do with the Z-Printer. Switch gears a little bit talk about resolution. So our high-end systems now break at 600 dpi. We have a newly optimized powder that goes along with that because we actually found that our powder-based system uh, was limited somewhat by the particle size. We've redone the particle size to take full advantage of the 600 dpi printing, which is, allows us now to do a minimum feature size of 0.1 millimeters and color resolution that's even finer than that. And when I talk about color, we're talking about real color here. 
190,000 unique colors are available on our IAM system. You can print colors directly from your CAD system. So you export the color that was put in when you did your design. Uh, you get it directly out of your CAD system with a standard 3D SVR mount, and you're able to print that out now. And because of our pure white base material, plus custom formulated cyan, magenta, yellow, and black channels, you're able to produce this wide range of colors, and you're able to do it at the pixel level uh, for your model. That color is built right into the part as it builds. And so I, I did want to mention something here, because it's interesting. We're seeing this dynamic in the marketplace today of actually some other systems being referred to as color systems, uh, because they can produce a number of different color parts, which is great, because it, it, you know, it, it definitely justifies and shows us the, the importance of color and adding color to 3D models. It's important to know the difference between kind of material-based color and our color on the fly system. So here are some of the statistics. These other systems can kind of print, you know, five, six, seven unique colors uh, based on their input material type. Where again, we can address 390,000 unique colors. That's 90% of the color gamut in Photoshop. That's basically any color that you can think of you can get out of our system. And so the other important part is to do this at the pixel level. So not at the shell level or not at kind of your entire part level, but to be able to do it individually at the pixel level really enables a number of applications. And so I think all color systems can basically be pretty effective at identifying different pieces of the assembly, which is a great application for color. We have complex assembly and it's 3D printed to be able to tell part A from part B from part C uh, adds a lot of value. But by having the full color capability of our systems, we're able to enable a number of other applications, ultimately driving to real life uh, examples of design. And so to illustrate that, this is where we were five years ago in state of the art for color. Uh, we were pretty happy about this at the time. This was a pretty amazing product. Uh, it looks good, and it clearly showed the difference between the top of the shoe and the bottom of the shoe in a couple of unique colors. But what we do today is much better. What we're able to do today is not just tell the general design intent, not just the concept of what that design was, but we're able to fully realize the designer's intent of the complete product. And so you can see this model in front of me here. This is kind of state of the art. The tread on the bottom, the stitching, the detail, you know, all of the detail, resolution, and color in this model means it now looks exactly like the production shoe. And to the shoe guys, this is amazing. This is actually from Clark's, and I think they're speaking tomorrow, and I encourage you to, to hear their presentation about how they use our technology. Uh, because it's, it does amazing things to their organization once they're able to produce a lifelike model right out of the 3D printer. Uh, here's another one, uh, another kid's model. I don't want to show this, so I'll hand this one around. Again, just take a look at the detail that's there, the full color that's there. Um, it's ultimately pretty incredible. We see this across all the industries now. Everyone creating lifelike models with the power of color 3D printing. And it's enabling other applications as well. So this is GIS mapping, um, putting together you know, huge maps, very detailed, high resolution color. Uh, in architecture now, moving away from just plain white models in some cases, just new full color models with full texture mapping for bricks and uh, roofing materials. All the details can be created in lifelike color. This is a fun example of just, again, when I say lifelike, this thing looks like it's alive. <laughs> this is a 3D print by one of our customers, Offload Studios, that just shows how realistic you can, how, you know, how much realistic you can create with color 3D printing. And combine that with the resolution, uh, it, again, just is able to recreate the detail of your designs uh, very crisply, clearly. This multimeter would otherwise just kind of be a brick if it didn't have all this color resolution on the surface to describe really what the design intent of this part was. So let me switch gears again to a little bit. Um, this is great for concept models, and this is great for communicating, for describing your design intent, for talking about designs in a lot of ways. But as we know, a lot of engineering goes beyond just the design intent. It's how does it perform? How does it functionally perform? So something we don't talk a lot about is the functional performance you can also get off of the print. So when I move beyond just the concept model and I want to make a functional performance model, and I want to assemble it, and I want to test it, in this case, a sprinkler head, I want to run water through it and see, you know, determine the scrape patterns and see how it all works. I'm able to do that now. And the reality is, when you take our new ZP150 material from ZCorp and infuse it with our ZMAX resin system, you actually have class-leading flexural strength, compressive strength, heat resistance, and hardness for the low-end 3D printer class. That basically amounts to strong, stiff parts that also have great accuracy. So 
So here's our spectrum for the material when finished this way and what it can do. Ultimately, 44 megapascals of electrical strength, 26 tensile, is a pretty strong material. You can tell by the elongation of the modulus, it's also very stiff. It also offers the hardness, heat deflection, uh, and compressive strength that's very useful in a number of applications. But it wouldn't be that useful if it wasn't also accurate. Because you need to assemble these parts to your other you know, pieces of the assembly. You need to actually be able to put them together. So this is what the, the 3D the Z printers can do in terms of accuracy. We don't talk about it a lot, but basically our system is not a photoresume system, so it doesn't shrink, it doesn't warp. Uh, it's not affected by UV light, heat, uh, other you know, energy sources. It's a very stable, robust uh, system, so it stays very accurate, which is a great benefit, which ultimately uh, enables pretty good performance. So don't, you don't take our word for it, here's Todd Grimm's um, third-party analysis of accuracy he did with laser scanning. And you can see here that, uh, I think on the previous slide I said about 7,000 he uh, printed this one part and tested it and got within 10 thousandths, which is great. This was actually on our previous generation product. So this was our Z printer 310 product, which we now have a lower cost, higher performing solution for in the marketplace today. So what can you do when you combine the accuracy and functional performance? You can start to take some of those ideas that you assessed for their appearance and for their you know, form and fit and actually function, actually use them now in the models by finishing them this way. So here's a couple examples of machine carriages, machine parts that ran inside machines, in this case for months, uh, to, to evaluate the design performance in terms of how it was going to perform in the overall system. We have a number of examples of this. Uh, we even do fun stuff like have one of our application engineers slide across the zip line off of a 3D printed, z core printed, uh, you know, uh, zip line. So I think I'm just about out of time. I will, one minute, yep. <laughs> uh, basically leave you with the thought that the Z printers are great. We talk a lot about concept models and the power that they have in the organization at the beginning of the design process and the ability to basically convey any design idea that you have instantly, you know, next day on the 3D printer. That's really powerful. We also see a number of applications across the entire organization, all the way through sales samples, cutaway models for communication, even after your parts are in final production, we're still finding customers have uses for 3D printing uh, and applications like that. So, with that, I'll just say thank you.